Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Sudanese protesters condemn Hamdog Burhan deal. Venezuela's ruling PSUV secures major victory in elections. Cast and Boric to lead in Chile's presidential runoff. Canadian police arrest indigenous land defenders. In our first story, Sudan's deposed Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok has been reinstated after an agreement with the military. The 14-point document was signed between Hamdok and coup leader General Abdul Fateh al Buran on November 21st. The Prime Minister will now oversee a government of technocrats until the election in July 2023. The deal was secured after the release of all political prisoners arrested since October 25th coup. However, the ministers of the dissolved transitional government will not return to cabinet if they are released. The agreement has been rejected by Hamdok's main political base, the Forces of Freedom and Change Coalition. Key forces behind Sudan's December revolution, including the resistance committees, condemned the deal. The Sudanese Professionals Association has called it a betrayal of the blood of the martyrs. The Sudanese Communist Party has also called for the continuation of civil disobedience and political strike under the slogan, No Bargain, No Partnership, No Compromise. Protests continued on Sunday after the agreement was announced. Tens of thousands of people took to the streets in Khartoum, Omdurman and Bari. Protesters chanted that Hamdok had sold the revolution. Security forces attacked people with tear gas and live bullets. The Central Committee of Sudanese Doctors stated that a 16-year-old was shot and killed in Omdurman. The death toll in Sudan's anti-coup protests has reached at least 41. In our next story, the ruling United Socialist Party of Venezuela or the PSUV and its allies have won 20 out of the country's 23 governorships. The National Electoral Council announced the preliminary results based on data from 90% of the voting centers as of November 21st. 21 million Venezuelans were eligible to elect over 3,000 governors, mayors, regional legislators and local councillors in Sunday's elections. Over 130 international observers, including delegations from the European Union, were present. Official data shows a voter turnout of 41.8%, which is an improvement over the 30% reported in the December 2020 election. President Nicolas Maduro welcomed the initial results, calling it a historic victory of the revolution. The government has been able to achieve key milestones, including a 75% vaccination rate against COVID-19 while under crushing sanctions. Sunday's election took place following key political developments in Venezuela in the past few months. Several rounds of talks were held between the Maduro administration and the US-backed right-wing opposition. A key outcome was the opposition ending its boycott of the election after three years. However, the Venezuelan government withdrew from the talks in October following the illegal extradition of diplomat Alex Saab. He was detained in Cape Verde while on his way to Iran to negotiate trade deals for food and medicine. Saab pleaded not guilty to a single charge of conspiracy to commit money laundering during his hearing in a U.S. court last week. President Maduro stated on Sunday that there would be no talks with the opposition, saying that they would have to respond to Saab's kidnapping. Next, we go to Chile, which held its presidential elections on November 21st. Far-right Republican Party candidate Jose Antonio Cast is in the lead with 27.9% of the votes. With 99.9% of the votes counted, Left-wing candidate Gabriel Boric has secured 25.8%. He is a current deputy and former student leader who belongs to the Approved Dignity Coalition. The outcome of this election will have a key impact on the long-standing demands 
for change expressed during the 2019 social outburst. A major part of this is the Constitutional Convention, which is working to replace the exclusionary Pinochet era text. The next president will oversee a referendum on the new document in 2022. Jose Cast is planning to continue neoliberal policies, including cuts to public spending. He has proposed the strengthening of support for armed forces and stricter immigration policies similar to the United States. He will also continue military deployments in the indigenous Bio, Bio and La Araucania regions, where the Mapuche peoples are fighting for their land and self-determination. Meanwhile, Gabriel Boric has proposed more funds for social services and progressive taxation. He has also pledged to replace the privatized pension system to a public one. He has said that he will introduce police reforms and has opposed the militarization of Mapuche territories. He has also supported the legalization of abortion, equal marriage rights and single parent families. Cast and Boric will now head to the runoff election scheduled for December 19th. And for our final story, we look at the ongoing repression against indigenous land defenders in Canada since November 14th, the tribes of the unceded Wet'suwet'en territory have blockaded the Morris River Forest Service Road in British Columbia. The blockade took place after the Coastal Gas Link, or CGL pipeline project, failed to abide by an eviction order. The notice was issued by the Giddington Checkpoint based on a January 2020 order by Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs. CGL averted the original eviction through a Supreme Court injunction. Meanwhile, Wet'suwet'en tribes have also set up the coyote camp for nearly two months to prevent drilling in the area. They have argued that this will impact sacred headwaters, drinking water and the salmon spawning river. Even after the eviction was enforced, CGL refused to evacuate its workers, leaving about 500 people in two work sites stranded. On November 18th, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police attempted to dismantle the blockades set up by land defenders on the Morris River Forest Service Road. Officers arrested 14 people, but the blockade continued. It has been reported that one person was released with no charges and eight have been released with conditions. The crackdown continued on Friday with the arrest of another 15 people, including two community elders. Among them was activist Slado, who is also known as Molly Wickham. We are peaceful, we are unarmed, but we are powerful, and we don't fear you. We are only a few here. I'm an elder of the Shinta, Arcasia territory. All I want to know is what your intentions are. I want to speak to your DLT. Any responses? We are praying, we are in ceremony, you must wait. We have water protection ceremonies happening. This is the sacred waters that we are in ceremony with. What are your intentions? Whoa. You are not. Right now you're in civil contempt of a court order and be arrested. Do you understand? Hey, I'm not. There's an elder here. Man. No, 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 no. There's an elder here. No, you're arrest. There's an elder here. No, I'm, I'm me. Photojournalist Amber Braken and documentary filmmaker Michael Toledano were also arrested. Following this, solidarity actions were organized in several places on Saturday. Dozens of protesters blocked an intersection in the city of Gulf. Protesters were also held in Peterborough. Victoria and Montreal and Toronto, where train tracks were shut down. Protesters also blocked a highway bypass in the city of Caledonia. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.